Well, Martha, that was a warm welcome. Welcome to Build. Thank you, thank you. We're so happy to have you here. Fun to be here. Um, so clearly the theme is Halloween. Forgive Which, my back. Do you wanna? Um, and we're here to talk about your new series, Shriek or Chic, which we were just in the green room saying, can you say that 10 times fast? <laughs> and do you Shriek know how to chic? spell it? And know how to spell it. <laughs> that's, that's the hard part. And, and if you give them the hashtag Shriek or Chic, you have to spell it for them because, because you know. Well, I'll leave that to you. I, -E I don't want to go that. And, you know, or K or C or whatever. <laughs> so before we get into that series, though, I just want to talk to you a little bit about Halloween and Martha. Thank you. I mean, how have you fallen in love with this holiday? Well, I think it happened when I was a child because it was a big deal. And we had, uh, this is pre-insurance um, at public schools. Uh, we had a lantern parade on Halloween night. So every child was allowed to carry a cardboard, a big cardboard carton that you cut out and put um, tissue, colored tissue papers in so it looked like stained glass with a, can a live candle in it, and you carried it all around the football field, and then you threw it in a big pile, and you had like a 400-foot inferno. And, <laughs> and they would can never you do imagine that. them letting kids do that today? No. With, I mean, the, you just couldn't do that anymore, and it was so much fun, and, um, and we loved it. So it was called the Lantern Parade, and we all had fabulous costumes. My, um, my aunt, my mother's sister, uh, Aunt Clemmy worked in a um, storage warehouse in Newark, New Jersey. And, the and, and when people died, all their belongings, if they weren't claimed, were sort of given away or auctioned off or something. And she managed to bring me home the most fantastic costumes. So we had a real matador jacket, all encrusted in gold and silver threads. And, uh, and my brothers were able to wear it until the time they were like 12, because matadors are all little tiny people. And I had, I had Marie Antoinette skirts and bodices filled, you know, completely beaded from uh, 18th century France. And I mean, we had some amazing stuff. So we got into it early. And was that, I mean, if you have, if you look at the Martha Stewart Halloween archive, and I'm sure the one that you're going to reveal in this series is the best ever. <laughs> it is. But what in the archive, do you have one that really sticks out in well, your mind? Well, maybe when I was little Bo Peep. <laughs> and... Uh, uh, very cute because I had a little crook with it and it's all covered in satin ribbons and I had this beautiful plaid skirt with a, a black satin bodice. I mean, really laced up little Bo Peep when I, I was only nine or something. It was very cute. But I have pictures from when I was a little kid. I was um, um, little Abner's girlfriend, Daisy May, one year. Good one. That cut off jeans. Guess what? I had cut off jeans before anybody had cut off jeans. <laughs> uh, only Daisy May and I had those. But, uh, but we always made a big deal. And so um, at our company, at Martha Stewart Living, uh, Halloween has always been a very big editorial feature. And this year, it's still a big feature. Um, we, uh, did everybody in the audience get a magazine? Hmm, lost opportunity, Claudia. <laughs> Where is my PR department? Um, but we have, we have a beautiful coming, owl and pumpkins on the real cover. And then you flip it over. Hello, how are you? Yeah, nice to see you. Um, and you flip it over, and there I am with my turquoise blue oak eye and Bao Shalom contact lenses, and like a sticking and a big white wig and a blue kind of collar around. So um, it's fun. We do that every year. And I, I always kind of, I, I have a kind of face that can be transformed. So I can look like pretty much anything. Well, I won't. I mean, you saw in that trailer when you walked in. Oh, yeah. And they had no idea who you no. were, which I loved. <laughs> All right, but we're going to get to Shriek or Chic, but I have, I need your help. Okay. Okay. So I am not the most domestic of all really? humankind, I know. <laughs> and my Halloween decoration is usually putting a couple pumpkins out on my porch. And you live in a very pumpkin-oriented And I live in Halloween Katona, town. which you know well. Yeah, yes. it, gets, it gets decorated for Halloween. You better, right. you better liven so, up. Can you help? <laughs> So you need to help me so my neighbors don't think I'm so lame. Well, what can I do? <laughs> well, there's lots of things to do. You just, have, you know, open up some of my Halloween books. Go to MarthaStewart.com online. <laughs> You're going to get lots of ideas. Perfect, perfect. Um, okay, um, 
You're, you have two cute, adorable grandchildren. Yes. And um, do we know what they're dressing up for? Well, last year they were, um, uh, I think, a sumo wrestler and a geisha. Uh, <laughs> Good. Teaching the three-year-old early to be a geisha. Yeah. But uh, she loved it, and they were climbing all over the place in their, in their real Japanese costumes. Um, I don't know what they're going to be this year. I have not been told. I don't, get, I don't get to be told everything, even though they're my only two grandchildren. And I pay their school tuition. I still, <laughs> I still don't get to know what they're going to be on Halloween. So your daughter doesn't come to the Martha Stewart board to get approval of the costume? She's extremely original herself. So guess what? She doesn't really need me to do that. Surprising. I like to be surprised. Okay. All right. Shriek or chic? You all just saw the trailer. I am excited to see this. It, it airs on October 7th on MarthaStewart.com yes. and AOL.com. Yes. AOL, I'm so excited. AOL, we love that. Um, and it is six riveting episodes with the finale is the reveal of what Martha is right. going to be for Halloween this year. So how did this come about? This is your first well, series? Well, um, this is the first time we've done it this way and of, of having outsiders come in and design me a costume. Uh, and they are three FIT students. Uh, you saw them on the video, um, this, uh, the, the video, and they were uh, very hardworking, and I must say, uh, accomplished designers. And they came up with three very interesting, um, two, two more uh, expected and one less expected costumes. And, um, and I chose the less, expe less expected, and, uh, because it was... I don't know, I think it just highlighted more uh, the extremely good um, um, designer and, and couturier qualities of this designer. But we had fun, and they had fun. They were working in our, in our atelier for about three weeks, and uh, they were mentored by Kevin Sharkey, as you saw, and uh, a couple other people at the company. But, but we did bring in Ralph Rucci. If you don't know who Ralph Rucci is, he works in this neighborhood, but he is... I think, uh, Amer one of America's most uh, amazing, uh, talented designers. Very high-end, I mean. And that's the moment when they burst into tears. Yeah, I right? know, no, no, and he really knows what he's talking about. And, uh, and we actually uh, produced a film on Ralph a, a couple years ago that you can see online. Uh, he is an amazing, and he's also a great artist. He paints his fabrics, sort of like uh, that painting back there is kind of like what Ralph might paint on a piece of satin and make it into a coat. But uh, very, very brilliant. So, um, so we brought in mentors for them, and we um, gave them a, a healthy enough budget to buy enough material, um, and and uh, any other you know beads and things that they needed, thread, um, and uh, they they came up with some very good ideas. So Project Runway has a you know little competition <laughs> on its well, hands. Well, yeah, it's uh, it's like that, but different. And we, it's we're, Martha. It's yes. Martha. But how do you how do you narrow it down? How many contestants wanted to be a part of it? How did oh, you quite narrow a few, it down to quite three? Quite a few entered sketches, and they were very carefully vetted by my uh, design team and my craft team. So, uh, and we have a craft team and a design team at Martha Stewart Living. So, uh, they were they were carefully vetted, and we narrowed it down to three. Um, and uh, no man. I, I was hoping there would be a, ma a male designer, but they they just weren't. Um, as good as the girls this, this year, this year. So we'll see. So what are you going to do on Halloween this year then? Uh, I'm going to be in Istanbul. <laughs> in your new costume. Unfortunately. I'm, I didn't plan it that way. I, and then I looked at the calendar, and that's where I am. And it's a, kind of a little bit of an oversight because I love decorating my backyard where the, where the gate is and people can come in. And uh, I like serving even the parents uh, hot mold cider and... Uh, and delicious well, can't uh, you do that in candied Istanbul? apples. Well, they, we have to do it like the night before Halloween and maybe. But we, so go a day early. But listen, if we have an ice storm like we had uh, two years ago and there was no Halloween, yes. guess what? We, we might do it later on or down at the train station in Katona. You know, we had that fabulous... I'll be there yeah. with my pumpkins. Okay, well, if it's on any day but the 31st, I'll be there. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we'll do a mock Halloween in, in Katona. Um, but so tell me, how did the episodes evolve? It starts, well, you walk us through. Well, we, we start with the contest. Yep. We start with the choosing of the, of the contestants. We show them uh, uh, shopping. Uh, for their ingredients. We show them sketching, doing mood boards and all of that stuff. 
And uh, just as, as any, any couturier would go about designing a, an, an outfit or a, or a line of uh, fashion or a costume for someone, they, they go through every step. And, uh, and uh, it's the angst and the, and the joy and, uh, and the uh, enthusiasm and the grief that goes on with it, uh, pretty much explained. And a lot of people, uh, real, in, our, in our office, a lot of them got really touched by the whole process. It was, it was interesting. So I think it's going to be a fun little series. And is this something that you now have the producing bug? I mean, you're always producing, but another series like this? Can you? Oh, we'll definitely do more series like this. Good. Definitely. Good. Good. Um, I want to, you know, another AOL project is Makers that you're also a part of. And there is a documentary coming out on women in business that you are heavily featured in. Oh, good. Well, we love doing that. <laughs> I better be. Um, uh, <laughs> No, well, there's, but there's a quote in it that I love, oh. that I just want to share, and I want to get your reaction to it. And it is, you know, people talked about this imaginary glass ceiling, which I tried never to even think about, which I think is so refreshing. You know, we hear all these struggles, and, but is that true? Well, that's just a little out of context, because I didn't even know what the glass ceiling was until somebody explained to me what it was. That's how out of it I am sometimes, but... Um, <laughs> But I, I, when I heard about this glass ceiling, I really think that, um, and I, as I look in this room, there's plenty of women here in this audience, and I think the glass ceiling has long been shattered, and I think now that women just have to take uh, even more seriously the, the, um, the idea that uh, we are um, absolutely equal, and we should be uh, equal in the workplace in every, every possible way. We still have a very few... Uh, percentage of the CEO seats in America. We need to work on that. Uh, but we also need to uh, continue to hone our entrepreneurial skills so that, uh, so that those businesses that are starting at home, and more than 70% of ho at-home entrepreneurial businesses are run by women. So it's a kind of an interesting fact. And, and I think that many of those businesses, if encouraged and, uh, and engendered by the, in the right way, can become uh, real companies. And we're doing that with American Made, too. We're uh, helping not just women, we're helping men and women, but we really uh, like to promote and support uh, the entrepreneurial spirit uh, in, the, in the United States in every different field. I mean, it can be uh, in, in the field of gardening or growing. It can be um, in technology. It can be in design. It can be in craft. It can be, uh, you know, many different fields in social responsibility. So uh, we're doing that. And that's in uh, this November, our American Maid uh, is uh, realized. And you can go online now and vote for uh, one of 900 finalists in our American Maid uh, contest. For the How many? Well, we have 900 that wow. made it to the finals. And uh, you can vote for one or one of those. And uh, that will be our People's Choice Award. We've already, as editors, chosen our first 10 uh, award, so we know who we've know, we know who have already won uh, as, as editors, but um, but there's one being chosen for People's Choice. All right, get the it's vote out, exciting. everyone. Yes. Um, all right, I think we are going to open it up to questions, and with okay. this great audience here. So over here, anyone? Oh, anyone? Okay, so we have a microphone here. So raise your hand if you would like to ask Martha questions about Shriek or Chic. If you want to. Ask about Martha, anything. Here's one right in the front row. Okay, great, right here. Here, you know what, I'll be fast. Okay. Hi. Hi. Um, so I'm a mom of two, and you're obviously such an inspiration to me and so many women across around America, around the world. I'm just wondering who is uh, your inspiration and your role model? Oh, well, I have um, many, and it's, it really started um, as, a, as a youngster, uh, just really seeking out the best teachers. Uh, and I would always, I mean, I'd invite my teachers home for lunch, and my mom, who was also a teacher, encouraged it. And we made nice lunches for our, my teacher. You know, they used to call that brown nosing or something like that. But, uh, it wasn't <laughs> but it wasn't really that. It was really, you could learn more at lunchtime. So uh, it's all about how much can you learn in a day so that, indeed, you can become a good teacher. So our whole thing at Martha Stewart Living is learn something new every day so you can teach something new every day. And, uh, and it's worked nicely. 
and we have a good library of really trusted, good content as a result. That has tips on how I can decorate for Halloween. Right back there. Um, hi, Martha. Uh, first off, thank you. I was on your show in 2011 as a, as a guest um, on the baby shower episode, so thank you for my stroller. Thank you. <laughs> Were, were, you, were you one of the young mothers? I was. Oh, yes. And my mom How's came How's the baby? Too. Wonderful. Thank oh, you. good. Uh, secondly, my real question. Um, as a crafter, what are the top three items you think like every crafter must have? Uh, well, I can sort of um, maximize that making all good craft tools one item. You have to have those great scissors, and you have to have the hole punches, and you have to have the circle cutter and the cutting mat, and the good knife, and those things. That's one. Good <laughs> tools. <laughs> and then um, you have to have the imagination. And you also have to have um, a, a, a modicum of creativity, unless you follow directions really well. But we encourage the creative as well as the following the directions. Um, crafting is so much fun, and it's very alive right now. So there's many people doing things, uh, making their own jewelry, um, making their own sandals, making belts. Uh, it's very, uh, and, and uh, drilling out mother's pearls with bigger holes so you can thread them on leather instead of on, uh, on uh, linen thread. It's, uh, it's really taken a, a totally different turn than it once had. And crafting is really, uh, there's many beautiful things being made. Another one? Another one over here? Oh. Okay, great. Hi, good morning. Um, you, you talked about fashion and decor related to Halloween, but what's your favorite Halloween treat? Treat? Yes. Um, homemade peanut brittle. It's, that's, uh, we have the recipe online, but it's, uh, it's a really good um, crunchy golden brittle uh, and big pieces, and it's especially good. And this year I might even include the little recipe for hot fudge sundaes with vanilla ice cream and big pieces of, of peanut brittle crumpled on top, uh, and then a dollop of whipped cream. That's really good. And salty, it's salty uh, brittle. Do you think, what, what, what's a different, what's a more creative way of giving candy away than the, than the CVS well, you know, bag of chocolate Well, there's parents, bars. oftentimes, if it's, pre if it's packaged or unpackaged, is even more dangerous. Uh, people don't like to, they, they go through the kids' bags and throw everything that's not wrapped in, or wrapped in right, the factory, right, right. they throw it away. But if you say a gift from Martha, <laughs> they'll, probably, they'll probably keep it. Are you letting everyone do that <laughs> in this room? And, uh, and we get a big line at the, at the door, and it's, it's always fun to see. And I don't make most kids do the tricks, but uh, sometimes you ask them to do something or say, say something. Make, make your kid you know, recite a poem or something. We used to have to memorize poems before we could go out. Really? Yeah. I mean, we took it seriously in Milton, New Jersey. <laughs> Was this your influence or your mother's influence? or Mother's and father's. Wow. Yeah. Time for two more. All right, two okay. more? Oh, here's one, another one in the front row. Okay, great. Bold front row. Hi there. I'm Adrienne, and I work for a career site called The Muse. Um, what is one piece of career advice that you find yourself giving to people who work for you or who want to follow in your footsteps? Um, well, one thing that I think is very important is to um, not have a job that you dread getting up for. Uh, if you're in that kind of rut, get out of it as fast as you can and really try to uh, find a job where uh, it's fun to get up and get out the door. Uh, no matter what time, uh, and, and maybe sort of like just really change everything fast. And another motto, it might be learn something new every day, but my other motto is when you're through changing, you're through. By the time I was 40 years old, I had already had three really great careers. And, uh, and it, they've all helped. Every single one of those careers has been um, a, a, just another stepping stone to an even more fabulous career. So it's, uh, change is good if you're not happy where you are. All right, last question. Or even if you think of something better. And if there, 
isn't, I have one little fun thing, Martha. Oh, oh okay, what? <laughs> so we do something that we're, is called the lightning round. Okay. Where we ask you either or questions. Okay. And you pick one or the other. I always get in trouble for this, and please forgive me. Okay, ready? Yes. iPad or notepad? Excuse me? iPad or notepad? Oh, notepad. Early bird or night owl? Early bird. Not surprised. Type A or easygoing? Type A plus. <laughs> <laughs> higher math score or higher verbal score? Higher verbal. Okay. Prepare or cram? Cram. <laughs> really? Okay. This is a no-brainer, but I, we ask everyone, so I have to ask you too. Domestically skilled or domestically challenged? Oh, you should change that. Yes. <laughs> Um, 10 minutes early or 10 minutes late? Uh, on time. <laughs> <laughs> and the last question, which I just added, trick or treat? Oh, trick. <laughs> Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Martha. <laughs>